Hey everybody, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So a few weeks ago, Apple released the new iPhone 12, which is capable of recording Dolby Vision HDR when shooting video. Now, I don't have the iPhone 12. I'm somewhere it's a little hard to get hold of right now, but our friend iJustine does, and she was willing to share some clips that she shot with it with us. So I thought today on MacBreak Studio, I'd show you how you can work with these HDR clips from the iPhone 12 in Final Cut Pro 10. So let's dive in. The new iPhone 12 can shoot 10-bit Dolby Vision HDR or high dynamic range video up to 4K at 60 frames per second on the Pro version. So what does this mean? Standard dynamic range or SDR usually refers to video delivered in the Rec. 709 color gamut with a maximum brightness value of 100 nits. HDR usually refers to delivering video in both a wider color gamut, Rec. 2020, as well as a much higher brightness limit up to a theoretical limit of 10,000 nits, but most HDR TVs run about 1,000 nits. The iPhone 12 can display, according to Apple, up to 1,200 nits peak brightness. You can edit Dolby Vision video directly on your iPhone in the Photos, iMovie, or Clips apps. You can't edit Dolby Vision in Final Cut Pro 10 until an update coming later this year, but you can still edit in the HLG flavor of HDR and deliver HDR video that can be viewed on iPhones and streamed via AirPlay to Apple TV and smart TVs that support HDR. The first thing to do is to create a wide gamut HDR library. I'll create a new library. Then in the library properties, click modify and set it to wide gamut HDR. Next, I'll import my iPhone 12 shots, or I should say Justine's iPhone 12 shots. Thanks again, Justine. Now, I'll make a new project with automatic settings and throw all those clips in the project. Finally, I'll select the project in the browser and make sure it's set to Rec. 2020 HLG. HLG stands for Hybrid Log Gamma, and it's a version of HDR that makes it easy to deliver in both HDR and SDR. Notice how the thumbnails in the browser and the timeline look blown out. This is because my Mac, a 2019 MacBook Pro, has a brightness peak of around 500 nits, so it can't properly display the brightest areas of these shots. I would need an HDR monitor connected via an AJA IO4K to view the full dynamic range of these clips. But see how the clips look properly exposed in the viewer? Well, this is because if I click the View pop-up menu, Show HDR as Tone Mapped is checked. So Final Cut is tone mapping the HDR clips down to SDR. This tone mapped view can serve as a guide to grading if you can't connect to an HDR monitor. I'll add a color corrector with Command 6 and bring up the scopes with Command 7. And I'll close the browser and library list with Control Command 1 to make some room. The RGB parade shows luminance percentages from minus 20 to 120 but the 0 to 100 range now represents the full available HDR luminance range for these clips. In other words, adjusting peak luminance to 100% doesn't limit you to the SDR limit of 100 nits, but rather is the maximum available brightness for the HDR material. So you can grade with the scopes and the tone mapped viewer as a guide. But again, best practice would be to use an HDR monitor. These clips already have great dynamic range straight out of the camera, or should I say iPhone, so let's move on to sharing your HDR projects to YouTube. YouTube has the ability to recognize an HDR video and to then choose to display the HDR version or tone mapped SDR version automatically depending on the viewing platform. But for this to work, you must first export a master file and upload it manually to YouTube. Do not use the YouTube option in the share menu. I'll choose master file under settings. Format should be video and audio. Video codec should be the same as the source, ProRes 422. And notice here how the color space will be maintained as wide gamut HDR using the Rec. 2020 HLG flavor. Once you've exported this file, you then upload it to YouTube. If you view the video on a Mac using Safari, you'll be presented with the SDR version. You can tell because there are no HDR options available in the settings pop-up for quality. This is because your Mac cannot display the full luminance range of the HDR video. To prove this, try viewing the same video in Chrome. 
which doesn't recognize the embedded metadata and therefore displays the HDR version, which appears blown out. If you view the video using the YouTube app on a newer model iPhone, you'll be presented with the HDR version, which you can verify here. You should also be able to stream in HDR using AirPlay to an Apple TV or Smart TV. Okay, that's great, but what if you want to mix your HDR clips with SDR clips? In that case, you'll be delivering an SDR, so you'll want to tone map your HDR clips into the SDR tonal range. Here's how to do that. First, here I have an SDR library. Note it says Standard in Library Properties. I also have an SDR project. Note it says Rec. 709 in the Inspector. In fact, you can't have an HDR project in an SDR library. In the browser, I have a mix of both Justine's iPhone 12 HDR clips and some SDR drone shots. I'll add a drone shot to the timeline, and I'll use this 2K preset. I'll also set the clip's spatial conform to fill. If I now add an HDR clip, I get a warning that I'm adding an HDR clip to an SDR project, so it will be therefore clipped. I'll click OK, and I'll set it to fill as well. This time the clip looks quite blown out since we're in an SDR project. To address this, in the Effects browser, under Color, I'll locate and add the HDR Tools effect. It defaults to converting HDR to Rec. 709. The image looks better, but still washed out. I'll perform a quick grading pass to balance the shot. It looks like the bright areas are clipped, but the detail is there. We just need to bring down the highlights and maybe the midtones down into the SDR range to reveal it. So, you can use Final Cut Pro 10 today to edit and deliver an HDR, or you can mix HDR and SDR clips when delivering an SDR. So what do you think? Leave us a comment below, subscribe if you like our content, and we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio. Thank you.